All right. Um, we're just uh, not good enough to beat a team like the 49ers at the end of the day, I guess. When you get three opportunities to do it and all three games end with a per fairly decisive win, that's really all you can say. And obviously the frustrating thing this time around was at halftime kind of looked like we might be, you know, it, it kind of looked like maybe, maybe we were, but when I say team, I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about the players, the roster and the coaches. So at the end of the day, what I can say is we're just not good enough to beat a team like the 49ers and, um, we go into this offseason with a lot to be proud of, but we also have a lot of work to do. And uh, I hope that the people running this show are aware of that. It was a successful season. It was a good season. I am happy about a lot of things. But uh, yeah, there's a lot to be done if we want to actually make this team great again. I, I don't even know in this current state, I don't know if you could even call this team good, <clears throat> but it's certainly not great. And today... You kind of saw a lot of the worst possible stuff come out for the uh, Seahawks. Now, you saw some really good stuff, too, and I am going to talk about that first. I'm going to lead with that. I want to talk about some of the things that were positive, <clears throat> some of the things that went well, and pretty much everything I'm going to talk about there is about this offense. But, uh, yeah, if there was any, like, like, I made a video a few days ago saying the Seahawks defense is officially bad. And some people in the comments didn't seem to care for that because the defense had been playing a little better over the last month or so. Well, uh, I don't think you're going to hear from those guys uh, for the rest of this offseason after what just happened uh, against Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, third-string quarterback, drop in a 40-burger on you. So I, I just hope that the people in charge recognize the problem and address the problem appropriately in the offseason because... Um, while this was a good season, and while I, I can't say this game was a complete disaster, I don't believe that it was, there is definitely some level of embarrassment here on one side of the ball. And it's not going to be easy to fix. It's not going to be cheap to fix. It's not going to be quick to fix. I don't believe any of that. But I can take away positives from this season, and I can even take away positives from this game. I, I really can. And I hope you guys can as well. I hope you guys can uh, take some of the things I'm going to say in this video in the intended spirit. I hope you guys can appreciate some of the positivity I'm going to try to find in a game where you lost by, well, 18 points with quite a few points being scored in garbage time by both teams. The game is over early in the fourth quarter. There is something definitely about that that's bad. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the offense because really... Most of the stuff over there I thought went really well. You're playing the number one defense in the league. You're on the road. There are some weather issues, although not nearly as many as we thought. And I think that Geno Smith played a great game. Now, I know he had some stats in garbage time, but he also had the interception in garbage time. You take the garbage time out, and when the game was in question, when the game was competitive, I think Geno did everything that he could do. I don't put the fumble on him at all, really. I don't think that's on him. Um... Maybe you could say he should tuck it, but it, things happen so quickly, I don't see how he could. So I'm not putting that on him. He made some really great throws. He was converting on third down. He was not wasting timeouts at the line of scrimmage. I think we may have wasted one early in the uh, third quarter, and it ended up being worth it because we converted a third and 12. And he, he had to work through some really, really bad breakdowns by the offensive line in the second half in particular with the penalties. So overall, I think Geno played great, played very impressive to me. And at this point, as we go into this offseason, if we decide to make Geno Smith our franchise quarterback for another couple years, I'm, I'm on board. I'm totally on board with it, especially after that game. I thought he played wonderfully. Uh, maybe one or two plays where he held onto the ball too long, but I, he even used his legs pretty effectively. He ran for some first downs. He ran for some good yards. Uh, the, the nine route to DK was pure money. One of the best throws he's made all year, I feel. On a third and short, too, you go for that and you hit it. Like, that. that's... I'm going to definitely remember that game as we move towards this offseason. So, Gino, I think he played great. The stuff that happened after the game was already decided. Like, you know, whatever. There was some good, there was some bad. I'm not looking at that stuff. I'm looking at the stuff that happened when the game was still in question. And 
I think he was money up until the fumble. And again, the fumble, I, I, I can't kill him for that. I just can't. I'm putting that on Gabe Jackson and a great play by the Niners defense. Um, I thought that Ken Walker did everything that he could out there. Not huge yardage, but when you fall behind in the second half, you can't get Walker the ball that much. And he had some good carries called back on penalty. So I thought Walker did his thing. I was impressed with the game that he played. Um, Lockett did not put up big numbers in this game, I know. But I was impressed with the way that he played. He had the one drop in garbage time. That's whatever. I don't care about that. A lot of his catches converted third downs. A lot of his catches moved the chains and allowed this offense to look really good in that first half. And of course... I kind of buried the lead here a little bit, but I got to talk about the guy who was our best player on the field in this game. DK Metcalf had, I don't know if it was his best game of the year, but it felt like it, and he was our best player today. No drops. He almost dropped the one, but then he made some miraculous catch and actually converted a third and 12. The nine route was beautiful. He had another nine route where he got open and Geno missed him by this much. Maybe Geno's one really bad throw of the game where there was an opportunity there and he missed it, okay. But DK was breaking some tackles. He was making big plays. He was catching short stuff. He was converting on third down. He he gets in the end zone twice. I know the second time was garbage time. Um, the only thing that DK really did wrong this whole game was he missed a block on third down that probably, well, Colby Parkinson did even worse on that play, so I'm not going to kill Metcalf specifically, but that was like the only thing I saw DK do that I didn't like. Other than that, I mean, he's getting interfered with by uh, Javarius Ward, and he's still making Ward look like a punk out there. And there was a point in this game where it really looked like Javarius Ward had the Seahawks money line or, 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 or something. So DK Metcalf, best player for the Seahawks in this game. Colby Parkinson, he missed that block on third down early, which was frustrating, but he made a couple good catches in this game. I thought he played pretty well. The breakdown of this game ultimately came back to, I think, the offensive line. Gabe Jackson gave up two sacks in this game, both on third down. One, the game-flipping fumble. Austin Blythe blew a block on a third and eight that I think would have sprung a first down if he hits it. Um, Damian Lewis moving too far upfield on two short passes where, you know, you just need to understand the rules. I know it's close, guys, and I know some people were unhappy about that call those two calls, but Damian Lewis needs to be aware of the situation there. He can't keep moving upfield. You got to stay back. So I'm going to say those three guys, the interior offensive line, they let you down a little bit. Cross, I think had a penalty, maybe even two penalties, um, but I think he at least blocked well. And Abe Lucas, same thing. I think Abe Lucas blocked fairly well too. So um, those guys, I can say at least they did well from the play to play. Uh, I don't know about the... Um, you know, the penalties are big, obviously. You don't, you don't want to have penalties. You can't have penalties. And that's something that needs to get cleaned up. But I, I think most of the offense was really good. It was really the two guys that I was critical of just now really were Gabe and Blythe, two guys who should not be here next year. In fact, I don't know if either guy will be in the NFL next year. So quite frankly, that's understandable. That's whatever. Those are two guys you've already kind of decided they're not good. You're not surprised when they make bad plays. So everybody else, the only guy that I was really disappointed in today who's a mainstay on this offense going forward is Damian Lewis. And really, it was just the two plays. It was two plays we really couldn't afford, but it was ultimately two plays. I think he blocked fairly well today, and I want to see what he can do going forward. Um, other than Metcalf, I think the main star of today was uh, Shane Waldron. I thought he called a really good game. We used a little bit of the Wildcat with Dallas and Walker, and it was effective. Uh, Gino got to boot out a little bit and hit a tight ends sprinting out towards the sideline. Um, we were able to get Metcalf open on a few plays. The nine route to Metcalf on the third and short when everybody's expecting us to just play for the sticks was beautiful. And despite the offensive line really breaking down, I think he had this offense playing as good as you could ever hope up until the Geno fumble. And what caused the Geno fumble was Gabe Jackson, a guy who shouldn't really be starting the NFL going forward. So whatever, I can move past that. But I think Waldron was one of the stars of the show tonight. I know not scoring, but one garbage time touchdown in the second half hurts. But there were extenuating circumstances where the process, which was so good in that first half, no penalties, 
no mistakes really. Um, just just maybe one or two missed blocks. The things were clicking so good, it just broke down. I don't know how much of that I can put on Waldron when Damian Lewis just keeps moving up field on passing plays. He needs to be better than that. I don't. I, I can't say it's like it's Waldron's fault because he didn't explain the rules well enough to his players. No, the players know the rules. They just need to keep their heads on straight on the field. So Waldron, really happy with the game that he called. Uh, obviously, everything took a terrible turn for the worse after the fumble that basically ended the game. But the reason why it ended the game was because the defense got murdered. And honestly, even if the offense had managed to play really well through the whole game, I don't feel like we win. I feel like the Niners would have kept scoring. And I'll talk about the defense in a second here. But I think the offense, especially against this defense, on the road, hostile conditions... I, I can't I can't say anything bad. Even Kay Johnson, man. I know it was mostly in garbage time. Kay Johnson had some catches in this game. Dariq had a catch in garbage time. You know, cool, you know, using what you have because you don't have a guy like a Goodwin. You don't have a guy like a Disley. You're finding a way to make it work. And I'm excited to see what he can build going forward. I don't think he did good enough this year to get a head coaching gig, but he definitely did good enough for me to be excited about where this offense is headed under him. And I'm hoping he can build on it, maybe get some better players. Again, the the to me, the central plays of this game, third and short on our first drive, uh, the third down where Geno fumbled, uh, the third and eight where we called a draw play that really should have worked, blown up by Gabe Jackson and Austin Blythe, two guys who we know are pretty bad and we know shouldn't be here. So I look at that and I go, okay, get him slightly better players at those positions and maybe 23 points in a game like this turns into 33 points in a game like this, and then we just need a defense that can at least play competently, and we can win games against teams like this. But that forces me to swing over to the defense, and I'm just going to say this right now. I know some people don't like it when I say stuff like this. I know people don't care for it, but uh, yeah, uh, Pete, that's an F-minus performance for you to, in this game as a whole in this game. Not just I'm not just talking about the defense, but Pete, that was an F minus. And the only I wish I could give you a lower grade than that. That was terrible. That was your worst performance of the year, and there have been some bad ones. And um this is why a lot of Seahawks people on YouTube are talking about Pete retiring at the end of the uh, season. This is why. Because he puts together a performance like that. Five hundred yards of offense to Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy. 500 yards of offense and 41 points. One punt the whole game. One punt and one drive that ended in kneel downs. Minimal quarterback pressure. No real blitzing. I think I saw Barton blitz once. Sitting back in soft zone. Sitting back in your cover three. Letting Tariq get murdered out there in coverage because you're not even letting him play tight. You're just telling him to protect against the nine routes that Brock Purdy can't throw. And he gets beat up underneath. He gives up like four long completions in this game. Why? Mostly because you have him playing so soft. Don't tell me Woolen is choosing to play like that. The tackling was atrocious. Um, the um, Some of the angles we took were bad as a team. Like I, I, I know Ryan Neal's playing his first game back. I understand that. But some bad angles taken by Ryan Neal on some of those plays. Just... No push by the defensive line, really. I think I saw Quentin Jefferson get pressure once and Puna get pressure once, and that was about it. 181 yards rushing and 320 yards passing. 500 yards and 41 points to Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy. You couldn't stop anything. You couldn't stop the pass. You couldn't stop the run. You couldn't tackle. You couldn't get pressure. Like, that is an F-. minus. Pure F- minus from Pete Carroll in a playoff game. For us to go into halftime with the lead, and then the Niners make their halftime adjustments, and we come out and get boat raced. Niners get the ball touchdown. Waldron puts together a good drive. Offense puts, puts it together. You drive down the field. You fumble. Okay. Unfortunate. It sucks. Niners drive right back down the field. Touchdown. Niners get the ball back. Touchdown. Niners get the ball back. Should have gotten a touchdown. Ayuk drops the ball. They get a field goal. Not a single successful moment on defense that whole game. And I understand the players, we have we need better players. We do. But for you to make no positive halftime adjustments while Kyle Shanahan coaches circles around you, 
Yeah, I'm not going to forget that. That's going to be a tough image all off season. Now, saying all that, there were definitely some players out there for the Seahawks that were bad. Um, Tariq Woolen played his worst game probably since week one. Most of it I don't think is his fault, but he did give up stuff and he didn't make any big plays. Got away with a potential pass interference in the end zone on the Niners' first field goal drive. Uh, didn't turn around at all and was just lucky the ball hit him in the back right as he was running into the receiver. Um, Barton. Barton was putting it on tape constantly that he doesn't belong in the NFL. And Barton's been a guy who's played better lately, but today it just looked like he was constantly getting embarrassed. Showing me Barton on the back of his helmet, on the back of his jersey over and over again because he's chasing a play down from behind because he got caught out of position. Barton, awful. Um... Uchenna was maybe the one guy on defense that I thought played fairly well in this game. Maybe Mafe, just because he didn't play that much. I guess he did his thing. Bruce Irvin playing way too many snaps out there, wearing down against the run. I know he had the sack, and I know he had a, maybe one or two other good plays, but played him way too much. Sorry if you guys can hear my dogs, by the way. Um, what else do you got? What else do you got? Um, at the end of the day, the players aren't good enough. At the end of the day... When Taylor got hurt, when Daryl Taylor gets hurt in this game and you have to put Alexander Johnson in, who is not even really an edge rusher, just so you can have another edge rusher, you know the players just aren't good enough. The defensive linemen aren't good enough. Especially. Honestly, the linebackers, the inside linebackers aren't good enough. In this game, I would say the safeties weren't good enough. Now, that's not saying I want new safeties. Diggs has been good this year and Neil has been really good, but neither guy played well today. Diggs did allow a couple deep shots down the field, which is exactly what he needs to be preventing. Cody Barton has had a really clean couple of months in terms of tackling. He missed uh, at least one, maybe two tackles today. Um, now, that's a case of a guy who's just going to get better. I'm not worried about these guys. I'm not worried about Woolen at all. He didn't have a good game today at all, but I'm not worried about him. But he was bad. Not worried about Mafe. I thought he actually flashed a little bit in this game, and he'll get better. He'll get much better. And I think them playing in this game was probably a positive experience. But we definitely need better players in several areas of this defense. So at the end of the day, yeah, I'm going to kill Pete Carroll for this because that was terrible and he was terrible. And that's the kind of game that makes me think he just needs to retire and get off this team already. And I'm not going to be forgetting the fact that he had that miserable of a coaching job in the playoff game in a game that actually turned out to be somewhat winnable by the way the offense played. But at the end of the day, I'm grateful for the opportunity to play in this game, and I'm still not mad about it. I'm mad about a couple of the things that went down in the game, but getting to play in this game, getting to go into halftime with a lead, that was cool. And guys, like I said, guys like K9, DK Metcalf, Geno Smith, Getting to play in a play... I thought Abe Lucas actually played really well. I don't remember any penalties. I don't remember him making any big mistakes. All that stuff, great. So, this was, I think, a positive experience. Because, especially on offense, I really want to stress this, guys. The two guys on offense who I thought really, really sucked today were Gabe and Blythe. We know they're going to be gone this offseason. Or if not, somebody lost their mind in the Seahawks front office. But we know those guys are bad. We know those guys need to be upgraded on, okay? I mean, Gabe Jackson shouldn't even be playing in the second half anyway. Phil Haynes should be out there by then, but he wasn't healthy. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like I learned something pretty negative about Pete Carroll in this game. Just the fact that he could perform that poorly. You know, one punt, one punt, and 500 yards, no turnovers, 41 points to Mr. Irrelevant. Not, not, not good enough. Not even close to being good enough. Even if you lose this game, it's not even close to being good enough. But saying all that, I can see some degree of a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I, I, I don't know if, I, I don't know if this defense can ever be great again with this current situation. Like, like, don't tell me not. To, by the way, people in the comments, don't tell me nothing about the Fangio scheme. We were not running a Fangio scheme out there today. We were playing very passive. We were in our cover three shells the whole game. We just sat back, let Brock Purdy pick us apart underneath. No blitzing, no pressure packages, nothing creative, nothing exotic. Just 
you know, let Brock Purdy sit back there and make easy throws to open receivers because we're playing this nonsense, soft, super conservative defense. So don't give me nothing about the Fangio defense either. You can't tell me that's the problem. The problem is we're trying to run some of it and then we're running mostly Pete Carroll stuff and it's garbage. <laughs> you know, we haven't forced a turnover in a playoff game since the Vikings playoff game in January of 2016. Not one turnover. We played how many playoff games since then? Like five, six? No turnovers. Granted, I will admit that this game, I thought there was going to be extreme rain, and there wasn't. And if there was extreme rain, maybe we get turnovers just because of that. But the, the, the bottom line is there was an extreme rain, and maybe that allowed Gino to play as well as he did. So I can't even really talk about that. All right. I'm going to stream probably during the second half of the uh, Chargers-Jaguars game. Hope to see you guys there. Peace out, go Hawks, and there's your season.